Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, February 28th. It is 6.33 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So for roll call, I'll handle town council, council member Mauer, council member Martin, Kel is here, council member O'Rourke, uh, council member Katuska is here remotely, council member Wales is here remotely, and vice chair Lapellis is here remotely. Uh, Chairman Manjos, if you want to take your call, your board of finance. <laughs> Okay, Mike Michael Manjos, uh, Mary Hall, oh, Rebecca, I don't believe is here. Nope. She doesn't, you know, um, Catherine Stauffer. Yeah. Steve Kirsch. As we know, the Great. 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 Perfect. Almost a full house. Great. All right, we have one communication, a memo from the first selectman. I ask that be incorporated into the minutes of the meeting. Item four, joint discussion with the Board of Finance regarding the fiscal year 23-24 budget. And uh, I hand it over to Chairman Main. Just Terrific, to start. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel like we've done this many times. It's, uh, I think it's always a good thing to do uh, heading into the season. Uh, obviously, a lot of work's gone into the budget already. Um, I know Ken and Ron and Heidi uh, deserve a lot of kudos because I've got a lot of calls on Sundays, questions, things going on, because <laughs> they've been working uh, crazy hours and weekends to put this together. Um, I think we have to recognize that this is probably the most detailed and transparent that I've ever seen. It seems to get better every year, um, and I appreciate that. I know it makes all of our work easier, so kudos to Heidi specifically for doing a lot of the heavy lifting uh, on this kind of stuff. Um, going forward, obviously, uh, I think we're all pretty comfortable that the town is in very good financial health. Um, I think the Board of Finance has done a great job over the last dozen years and things seem to be improving. We got through some of the bumps um, and now we're looking forward. Um, I know there are some changes to this year's budget. I know um, there is proposal for the use of fund balance. Uh, which is something we didn't used to do, but our fund balance was never at this level. So that is something the Board of Finance will discuss, I'm sure, at length, because um, obviously we didn't build our fund balance up to this point in one year. I don't expect we're going to take it down in one year. So I want to make sure we're looking at a, a long-term plan on how we're going to use it, um, stage it, so we're not taking it off in one hunk and uh, you know, try to plan out that over a multi-year period, which I think will be important. Uh, obviously, I think I'm going to say it again. I've repeated this for a few years. Um, the Board of Finance, I don't want to be involved in a lot of the minutia detail. Uh, certainly, we try to stay out of personnel and, you know, uh, salaries, that kind of stuff. To me, that belongs with the first electman in the town council. Um, those are things that you should certainly give recommendations on or make changes on if you so you see fit. Um, I look at the role of the Board of Finance to really, uh, obviously, we look at the Board of Ed, which Council will not do. Um, that is a big number, uh, for sure, even with the adjustment. Um, and with the current contract that we did approve, um, it's going to be a continually big number. So that's something we're going to have to look at long term as well, because structurally, it's going to become a problem. It just is, uh, you know, teachers' contracts are what they are. I think we did quite well considering. I thought it came out fairly. I think both sides were equally unhappy, which is a good negotiation. Um, but it's something we're going to live with now for three years, and it's a big number, and that's primarily the drivers. So I do want us to take a hard look at the Board of Ed. Um, we do have a decent bonding proposal. I love the fact that most of the projects have already been vetted. Um, so one of the things I did want to discuss tonight was I'm not convinced we need the joint meeting on bonding anymore because most of the projects, the subcommittee has already gone through and council has already decided we can figure out the funding of it. Um, but I feel like the projects have been compared to where it was 10 or 12 years ago. Most of the things have been on the schedule for a while. Most of them have already been reviewed and vetted and presented and gone through. So I don't see the need for that, but certainly happy to take feedback on that from obviously my team and council. 
uh, to see where we think we go. The proposed is 5.7 million on and 5 million off. So it's a nice steady flow. If we look at where our debt is compared to where it was 10 or 12 years ago, I mean, it's nearly half. Um, so we are certainly in a position to handle all of that um, if you see fit. So if you do want to review or change any of that, that's certainly counsel. If you want to do it with us, we're happy to do it. But again, I feel like that's kind of been uh, covered, which I really love. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at revenue. Um, we're in a very different environment uh, financially than we were a couple of years ago. One, we have a much bigger fund balance, but rates are just in a whole different world. Um, and I don't foresee that changing, certainly in this budget cycle. So, uh, you know, where we were budgeting very low over the last few years, we do get a nice pickup in revenue of interest. And obviously, we'll take another harder look at that. I think it's still conservatively budgeted, uh, but we might be able to pick up a little bit there. We'll dive into the grand list. Again, we had a nice break here. Uh, I'm sure everybody's aware just by what we've seen already that there were some decent increases, certainly on the Board of Ed side. In other words, um, Ken's done a nice job from what I can see of mitigating a lot of that and getting it to a level that I'm not terrified of. I'm certainly not happy with yet, but, um, you know, it's a good starting point as far as I'm concerned. So hopefully council will go through it with a fine tooth comb. If there are things, and I know this has happened in the past where you don't feel like you've gotten enough time to get into everything, or if you want us to take a second look at, we're happy to take a second swing. If you give us direction, we will follow it. Um, but I don't plan on spending, you know, going through every department, going through like we used to do in the past. Uh, it'll really be some of the big ones, obviously. Uh, we all know where the big drivers are, and we will spend time on the big drivers, but we're not going to dive into every line or every question. I think uh, we've all become a little more confident in the process and where it's gone, so I'm comfortable with uh, what's presented. And I think we can not get crazy getting into it and hopefully get to a good number. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, again, I touched on the grand list. I think it's been a, a decent pickup, which was a nice surprise as well, because that'll help mitigate uh, the increase. And we are going to try to do a little bit. Uh, we've talked about this for a dozen years of looking two or three years out. Um, so when we do do our budget, we're going to try to figure out, you know, if there are any surprises coming next year or the year after that we need to take into consideration. Uh, we've never done a multi-year modeling, so it's going to kind of be a, a trial and error, but Heidi's willing to take a whack at it with us. And certainly on the bigger things where we know. <laughs> where there's where there's where Ron. <laughs> yes. It's all Ron's fault. He's not letting Ron get away with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but we will, and I really do want to get to the point, and you know, we've discussed it, of we should be looking at a multi-year plan, um, not just one budget and then dealing with what happens. Um, if we plan out fund balance, if we plan out, we know the teacher's contracts now, which is a big driver. We know what some of these things, and if we model assumptions, we should be able to at least uh, look ahead and see where we see problems coming up. Um, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, certainly open for anybody else who wants to jump in and questions, concerns, comments on my side, or if you want to jump in and Sure. No, I, I appreciate everything uh, Chairman Mann just mentioned. Um, you know, I think I've only been on town council for you know, a few years now, but I think it's worked well every year uh, going through the budget process like this. I guess I just have two things for, for the Board of Finance. Uh, one is, are we going to, and uh, First Life can weigh in on this too, um, is the expectation of the uh, motor vehicle revenue uh, that we were slightly underfunded, but we received additional funding somewhere else. If we can expect that this year with the governor's budget, so, <laughs> no. the math on that is no. uh, is very hard. To... <laughs> Forecasting what the state will do is sometimes a uh, difficult proposition. But so in the current fiscal year, the way the state, uh, the way their their formula uh, worked out of how they were going to make town's whole for the motor vehicle tax cap um, was a little bit um, uh, less than intuitive, I guess is the right uh, way to put it. Um, they were working off of prior year actuals on certain numbers and different than, you know, Ron's, Ron worked with uh, OPM to try and 
kind of figure out how they were doing it. And I think we we finally got to it, but it was difficult in the current fiscal year to find out what was going on. Um, so we did get less than we expected in the current fiscal year. However, we did get um, another grant through the municipal revenue sharing account, which for years and years has never been funded. Um, we did not plan for any funding in the current fiscal year. So that that made up for that um, almost pretty much to the, you know, it wasn't to the dollar, but it was pretty, pretty darn close. So we were kind of made whole in that respect. So we did not have a, a budget hole. Uh, for next fiscal year, um, you know, Ron, again, now that he had the formula that OPM was using, kind of, Worked through that, and the the state runs that came out from uh, the governor's budget actually um, are a little bit higher than what the formula came out. So I'd like to wait because um, the governor's budget is early on in the state process. We usually get we'll get later runs as they go through like appropriations and other things. And so I'd like to see kind of where we are by the time uh, Board of Finance has the budget, and we can certainly make recommendations if we think we're going to get a little bit more than is currently programmed we can incorporate that um it's um you know it's it's close but it would be a pickup um i think it was about 100 grand uh pickup um and what came out as the initial town run for that as far as that other grant that we got that we never get and it, we've been told don't expect it so we didn't i didn't put any i did not put anything in that revenue line in my budget. Um, and then I, I guess this more a question for the Board of Finance. Uh, the proposed budget currently uses um, significant amount of our fund balance, um, but it would remain around the upper threshold of the recommendations. Is, is that yeah, I think, again, this is something that we will discuss at length, but my gut is Obviously, we're above the threshold at this point for a number of, you know, very good reasons. So uh, to me, I don't, we don't want to hit the taxpayer a second time if we're already funded from that. Um, but the problem is, is it puts you behind the eight ball for the following year uh, if, if you used a huge mark. So if we can figure out a way to structure it, which, um, you know, I've certainly had discussions with Ken about of kind of taking it down over a three year period and mapping that out. Uh, I know there's a calculation in the book here showing that um, we would get down to it, but it's also not factoring in the increase in the budget. So if we we have to make an assumption the budget's going to go up pretty much every year, it's just the way it works, as much as we'd like it not to. Um, so I think you know after using this year and the second year, we'll be back in formula uh, of where we want it to be. Uh, so again, and, and, and as our budget gets bigger, I mean, the dollars add up, so uh, it does make a difference. So we do get a benefit from it because we're earning much more interest um, from that standpoint. So there is an advantage from that standpoint, but um, I do wanna, we worked long and hard to have a, a formula that we used. Uh, we certainly discussed it at length and I would certainly like to get back in compliance with it. And we'll have a better number in the next you know, four to six weeks, we'll have a better idea where we're gonna land this year too. Because right now there are a lot of projections rolling into it, but certainly we have enough to use some. I think it would be, uh, I would be against not using any. Uh, I would be against using all, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I think somewhere in the middle uh, with a multi-year plan makes sense. Anyone else on town council? What, num what number were you looking at for using for the undesignated fund balance? Uh, honestly, haven't gotten to that point. Um, I think the proposal right now has three and a half and three, three. three. So somewhere to me in that, that seems to make sense. You know, could we look at needing to use three and a half? Maybe. Um, I think once we get to the point where we know what the expense is, we can look at that in a formula and figure out, you know, where we would like to see the tax increase where we think it will pass. Uh, obviously, we like it when things pass on the first fly, and we know kind of the tolerances the voters have shown over the years. Um, but you would consider maybe three and a half? I certainly wouldn't rule it out by any means. Uh, because again, I think, you know, you've got a cushion of probably, you know, four to five million uh, just at the top level. So if we did three and a half, I'd want to probably plan on using two next year and weaning off of it. 
Um, you just can't take that whole hit in one year. Right. If we did use three and a half and then went to zero, your tax rate would be nuts next year. Right. And then we're back in the same boat. So we didn't really accomplish anything. So I think staging it, staggering it, planning it out would make sense. Um, you, you, I think you said um, five off, five on, or five on. Five seven is the proposal right now, and five gets off this year. Okay. So net of about seven hundred thousand, um, and then after I think the bonding that you approved last night, um, I think we're in the thirty million range. Just under, uh, you know, I didn't. Bring, <laughs> that's the one thing I didn't bring with me. Not, yeah, okay, it's on. just under that, right? <laughs> yes, um, will be. Right. Going forward. Yeah. So I mean, uh, certainly, very comfortable with the, the way we've done the bonding over the last few years. I mean, I remember. And I think I'm sure you do too. And we were well over 50, 60 million in in that number. So um, there's certainly no concern with that. And um, I guess there's just been less major, major projects that have come up than needed. So um, if there were other things that you would consider, we'd certainly be open to it because we do have flexibility. Um, but again, there's only so much you can tackle at one time too. So, and that's one of my questions going forward is, are there things that we've been pushing off of the capital plan that we could bond for and get done that would be of value? Because this certainly is the lowest number. We certainly can increase. I, I believe I've been told that we could even increase our debt a little. Without, we certainly without, could. One of the concerns uh, that we need to consider is you're probably well, in the highest rate environment you've been in well, that's, in a decade, and, and we really it, think it's it going to stay there. Easy. So, you know, is it worth putting that much debt on in one year when the rates are not historically high, but certainly over the last decade high, um, where, you know, in 18 months, rates might be less. So, you know, that's why I, would, I wouldn't be willing to double it just based on that risk factor. <laughs> But like, if there was another half a million or a million that you thought was important, we certainly would rule it out. Uh, I mean, there are things on the list that have been pushed back a lot for for uh, you know very obvious, clear reasons. Right. But they might be things that we want would want to look at again, and you'd be willing to look at them. Well, right. Based on the current financial situation, absolutely. Okay. I mean, there's certainly, you know, we're certainly not in a place where. I would say absolutely not. We can't handle it. We couldn't handle it. And that's where I think the first selectman comes in and you come in is, you know, what's the priorities of the town need to be directed there? I'm comfortable and I think everybody on the board based on these numbers would would look at it the same way. It's just that risk of putting too much on and then two month, two years later we're refinancing it to try to save money and okay. spending more money bonding it. So and also the capacity of the town to handle it. Right. Um, the day we say go do it, it still takes, you know, a long 18 months, two years by the time typically everything gets, you know, pushed through and done. So, and, and yeah. may I? Yeah, go ahead. Just um, one last thing you said you would consider trying to look further out. So, what do you, what do you see ahead or what does the board see ahead for? Well, I think uh, one of the two things that is coming up is obviously there's, you know, the Board of Ed is going to be doing a facility study. Um, we're certainly looking in an environment where we're not dropping children like we were. Um, so that's something we got to look at the long term effects of that. Um, you know, we were in a declining environment for a lot of time. We're certainly not in that declining environment, whether it's going to continue to grow or stay flat now, we don't know. But there's one of the things we look at and what the needs are. Um, and then beyond that, again, uh, I'm not a fan of picking projects. It's not <laughs> what I feel like I'm good at. It's like um, that's up to what we think the needs are. I mean, we've addressed a couple of the big needs in the last couple of years, uh, which we're starting to see come online, which is great. Um, but again, everything that's on that, I think, has been vetted through. And I don't see any huge, huge capital expenditures that we're looking to take on that I can see unless somebody comes up with. I mean, the out years, we have roofs in, on a couple of school buildings. Right. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Board of Ed's plan, those are the single largest non, yeah. non reoccurring yearly. Right. Uh, and we hit a bunch of those in the last, so, yeah. So we're back into that cycle. Right. 
the roof's coming down. Right, but we did take off one of the fire, you know, we've yeah, broken up we the fire them. trucks. We've tried to take them so they, they don't all hit at once, which right. is, I think, a, a wise approach. Is But if you let too many of them sit out too far, obviously they all end up backing up at once. Okay. And then you have an emergency on your hands. Okay, I'm good. Okay, Jason. Uh, so my two areas that I think are kind of right for Board of Finance over uh, Council, although I'm sure some of it will be discussed on council as well. One we've kind of started, which is the capital aspect. I am of the mind that probably, while there's some things that I'd like to, this probably isn't the year to, uh, because of the rates being, I think we had a, a chance there we got a window we and we missed it um, to, to throw some projects on there, which I, I mean, I, I, we, we talked about every year and it's, do you bite, do you bite? And unfortunately, I, I think we may have missed that, but considering not only the rates, but also possibilities of some other big expenditures uh, that could come to fruition uh, for the town, uh, this year might not be the year to throw things on because there might be some other things that come up um, yeah, I mean, the only other thing I could think of that would be an unknown today that could come up would be a land acquisition. Right. That's. I mean, that would certainly be something that could. That, that that's right where I'm at. <laughs> that's why I figured. I mean, and that makes sense. No, no, no. It's true. It's uh, if, if the right opportunity came up, it's certainly something we would discuss, and we have the the, the bandwidth to handle. Right, and that's why I think so keep making sure we that keep that bandwidth for uh, considering certain things that are in the air are is, is a good idea. Um, the other one is something that- You danced around that well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately go right to it. It's, a, it's my day. Uh, so the, the other one is also something that you already touched on, which is the use of the uh, fund balance that we have. Um, it's something that has actually kind of perplexed me over the past years because we have used some fund balance, uh, which I which was good, but it was always the worry of exactly what we've discussed of then what, but then it also seems like we're year after year coming back with a little bit of a surplus, which is a good thing, but it also raises the question of where we're putting our contingencies and do our contingencies need to be as high as they are um, when it seems like in the end, we're not getting to them. And no question about it. I mean, by nature, and I'll certainly be guilty of this, been extremely conservative with the finances of the town. And don't expect I'm going to change that way. That's just my nature. I'm yeah. going to be uh, obviously careful based on what we know and what we don't know. And I've always built like that. And we do, um, we can look at things like collection rate. And there could, there's a number of places we can tweak um, that would be riskier, but based on our current fund balance situation, not a big risk because we've got the backstop now. So there are places that we could certainly push on uh, that we didn't normally push on. And those, yeah. those areas. Yeah, the biggest areas where we've not need to fund this collection rate is. <laughs> We've always been conservative on the collection. COVID right? years, you could certainly, example, you know, we programmed a tremendous amount of fund balance during COVID and right. didn't need any of it. Right. So and that, and that's kind of where right. that is. That's the other way of easing that burden year after year on the taxpayer is by not being quite as I'm not saying don't be conservative, but not being quite as conservative in those numbers so that if we are using the fund balance that we say we're going to use, it's even a lower amount. And then when we come back and we're not using those numbers and we find that we're hitting those numbers, that that raise isn't as strong in the future either, right. because that's where the money's coming from rather than yeah. a, a, certainly budgeted a little riskier yeah. fund. We could certainly aspect. raise some revenue estimates. We could raise the collection rate. There's plenty of places we could be riskier now now that we have a cushion. Yeah, and, and I think I think that's something for the Board of Finance to seriously look at this year. Um, one, it would 
like I said, it would ease the blow in the future, but it also could ease the, uh, the blow this year, which is a uh, higher than we've seen in a little while right. raise. Yeah. So but again, I still don't think it's out of a place that's, you know, anybody's looking going, you know, Oh my God. No, I, I agree I that it's get it down into the low twos. I'd be very, happy yeah. That, you know? And I and, could by making those tweaks. That's certainly an area we'll look at. Yeah, that's uh, that. That's where I would look. Um, I, 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 like I said, I think it might be something that comes up in discussion on council. But my guess is that's more a discussion that's ripe for board of finance to make those decisions. Um, thank you, uh, council member. Can we just review uh, the splits between the town and board of ed and the total for the public and whoever else might be online with, with regards to the uh, proposed increase on the town side? What, where are we at with that right now? Well, the overall that the, the town side expenditures is a uh, run correct me if I'm misspeaking, I believe a 1.85 percent. Correct. Okay, 1.85, and then for the board of ed, 4.8. With my reduction. Okay. Okay. Well, that's actually. Uh, yeah, it's 40. Yeah, no, all right, yep. So, and then overall, if you combine them, you're at 3 3.85. 3.85. 3.85, okay. And with, re with regards to, you know, how, just to remind everybody how this is broken out, and, and the reason I go through this is, um, you know, every time we go through this every year, the, generally seems to be a little bit of confusion with regards to what body of government has uh, has any sway on what portion of the uh, of the budget so just to, just to reiterate for everybody uh, on the town side you know obviously the town council has uh, you know has a say on on the town budget on the board of ed side uh, town council does not uh, uh, and uh, you know, just want to just make that clear as, or, or remind everybody of that fact because that seems to get lost in the uh, complexities of the of the budget season every year as much and as often as we go through it i see the same you know the same misunderstandings over and over and over again yeah. and i think also it's good to point out that the board of finance while we have oversight on the board of ed we don't have line item control we only have the bottom line number control so I think a lot of people get confused out of that too is one cut this once you cut that it's not for right us. so uh, you know the, again the town 1.85 on the increase and right now the board of ed's sitting at four point percent no that's it all right uh, we do have a public hearing to begin. Uh, if there's any last minute questions. Council people in line. Yeah, sure. Hold on. Uh, one, one moment, Mr. Kirsch. All right. Is there any uh, council member that is online at this time? Do you have any questions or comments before we move on? Please remember to unmute yourself. Hi, this is I'm good. online. Okay. And Enid's good. Right, I'm thanks. good too. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Thank you. In, in addition to the things that um, Mike had pointed out, one of the other things that concerned me um, on the Board of Ed, uh, the reduction this year was taken um, by applying grant money, um, and, and that's you know, appropriate in, in the situation. The problem is that's you know, <coughs> coming to an end. And so not only will we have the pressure going forward uh, of the contracts that Mike spoke of, but, that's a revenue, source, but, but we have a, a loss of funding source. So we have to balance that and figure out how that you know, affects us. Uh, it has been a long time, I think, for a lot of people uh, who don't remember the Board of Education history of, of increasing student enrollment and stuff, and we've lived through a, a many years now of, of generally declining enrollment, cutting staff, and, and we're in a, in a different environment. And so people have to keep that in mind. I think mean, we will keep that in mind. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> in any case, um, I echo what Mike said about the fund balance. Um, 
I do think we have some space to do some additional bonding if there are projects um, that are worthwhile doing. Um, I also think that maybe we should be looking at whether bonding is necessary for, for every one of those projects as opposed to, again, some of the fund balance, which if it doesn't exist now, may exist in, in the future if we run additional surpluses. So there, there may be multiple ways to skin a cat and still get to the, the concern that I have about things and the concern that uh, Martin uh, expressed about things that have been pushed out. Um, because I think those things are also valuable. I think um, doing things that maintain the assets of the town are important to do. Um, and so that's something I will be looking at and I think we will discuss as a body. Thank you. Well, there's not anything else. All right. Look well, forward to getting the budget. All right, great. And again, and we're always available if you need us for anything. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. If we need to come, we'll come. If you need just questions, uh, any of us are available for that. So please. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck. All right. Well, I think we can just go into the town hearing, yeah? Uh, yeah, you can. Seven o'clock. Yeah, not bad. We did. Call the hearing at your discretion. And all right. All right. Hey guys, nice to see you in person. Good to see you. <laughs> and next year, same place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, uh, well, I'll be in later. Yes. Uh, be in the uh, yes, I'll be in the country. Yeah, like the one from Dubai, we're not easy. I have to say, 2.30 in the morning, I came over there. Hi, thank you. Good yeah, night, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Thanks, Bye. see you later. Bye, all. All right. For the record, it is 7.05 p.m. And I'm going to open this public hearing uh, regarding the fiscal year 23-24 budget. Pursuant to Town Charter Chapter 8, Section 4, the purpose of this public hearing is to provide any elector or taxpayer the opportunity to be heard regarding the town budget as proposed by the first selector. Uh, for purposes of organization, I will first ask that if there is any member of the public in town council chambers that would like to be heard regarding the fiscal year 23-24 budget to please come up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record and provide any comments that you have. Oh, no takers? Okay, and we will go online. Uh, if you are using uh, your cell phone or house phone or tablet or com personal computer, uh, please remember to unmute yourself. And if you are on a cell phone or uh, home phone, please unmute yourself using star six at this time. If you would like to participate during this public hearing, Please state your name. There are multiple individuals that would like to participate. I will create a list uh, and we'll go from the list in some sort of order. Once again, if you're online or you've called in and you would like to participate in this public hearing regarding the fiscal year 23, 24 budget. Please remember to unmute yourself uh, if you are using a, a tablet or computer. Or if you're on the phone, please unmute yourself using star six. Some of those for those of you that are in town council chambers, it's an open invite. If you want to come down and participate, 
go right ahead. I'll give individuals another few moments. They come running in. The drawer open. Uh, for selectmen, is there a designated time? There is not. Um, I mean, if you've asked multiple times, um, you are, credit does not prescribe a, a specific time limit. So if there's no one who's indicated a desire to speak, I believe that you may close the public hearing at your discretion. All right. Well, just in case there were icy roads, I'll well, give them a 10 minutes. I, and I think in the past, our, our general our general consensus has been around 715. That gives enough. Wow. And now and I'll give them an extra five minutes tonight with the ice. Sounds good well to me. All right. So 720. Again, if I don't think anyone's joined us, please remember to mute yourself and say your name for the record. So in February of ninety three, so thirty. Oh. So the, so the wow. <laughs> I'm still here. Thank you. Uh, and council members, our next meeting is 6 p.m. on the 7th. Well, we're all here. 6 p.m. on March 7th? Yes. Okay. Because what's going on? Our budget workshop meeting for okay. the department. Okay. <clears throat> so it's not really mandatory. Well, if you find it, you have any questions or you want to listen to your colleagues' questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. You know it's fun, Amy. Maybe there's pizza. <laughs> I don't have a car. I it's don't true. have a car. That's the possible. My, my car was, is being fixed, so I don't have a car. And I can drive Ralph's, but if I have an accident, I'll be doing extradition. There's no extradition to Brazil. So I'll be having my passport with me. Anyway. Someone's going to run in that 720, I know. Hey, wait. We open it back up. Wait. Hold the presses. <laughs> Hold the phones. Here comes a person.
the moment of movement and She's been recruited to play in college. Division three, but that's fine. I mean, it's, you know, she's a pimp sitter. She's a four point. And she's in she's all around a good active kid. You tell her in January, no time to change anything. Because it's on for the winter sport. It's a fact. Four minutes. Next year. Oh, it's just a long time with the coat and stuff. Is anybody there? <laughs> Millions. We're here, Andy. You're there. Oh, good, good, good. 
All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. It is. I will note for the record, it is 7.20 p.m. There is no member of the public currently in the gallery of town council chambers, and there is no member of the public that is currently logged in via tablet or phone uh, besides uh, town council members and one member of the media. Uh, this is the last call to participate during our public hearing regarding the fiscal year 23-20 budget. Any final takers? Hearing none, I'm closing this public hearing at 7.20 p.m. and I'm adjourning this meeting, town council at 7.20 p.m.